Hello and welcome to another video. So last video we talked about infinite limits and vertical asymptotes. In this video we're going to be doing a similar kind of situation but instead of doing concepts we're going to do an example of infinite limits and vertical asymptotes. And I say example not examples because there isn't too much to talk about for the examples wise but there is one concept we need to clear up and that is how do you actually evaluate limits at infinity or rather as the limit approaches infinity or, or more more accurately sorry when the limit equals infinity like or gets to infinity rather so how do you do that well let's look at let's take a look at that with a concrete example so suppose i have this function so we have e to the power of x cubed minus 4x and we're dividing that by x plus 1 uh, squared so we just make that a bit better squared times x minus 1 and suppose I want to find the vertical asymptotes of this function. So find the vertical, so vertical asymptotes. Okay, so remember, a lot of people just say the vertical asymptotes of where the function is undefined. That's not true. So most people would say, for example, negative one, negative one is an asymptote because it's undefined at negative one, and one is an asymptote. You gotta be careful. That's not true in this question. You'll see when you do the workout, you'll see that only one is an asymptote. Negative one is actually not an asymptote in this question. And that's kind of the reason to pick this example because it kind of demonstrates the pitfalls of just saying, oh, the asymptote only occurs where it's undefined. That's not true. So let's go ahead and kind of show you why that's the case. So first of all, I'm gonna do the limit definition because that's what an asymptote is. Remember that to find the vertical asymptote, we take the limit at the points where it's undefined. So I have to take the limit as it approaches negative one and one. Okay, let's start with the negative one. So the limit as x approaches negative one, and I'm and I'm gonna do it from the left side, just because I can. I don't really have a reason, I just felt like it. Okay, so this is gonna be e to the power of x cubed minus four x divided by x plus one, uh, all squared times x minus one. Okay, now, uh, how do we actually plug in negative one? Because we can't, if we were to plug it in directly, negative one plus one, well, that's undefined. So we can't really just plug it in. So how do you actually do this? Well, depend. it depends on what you kind of learned in school or whatever, but the way I do this kind of limit is I plug in numbers that are really close to negative one. Now, a lot of people might be throwing hands and going, oh wait, you can't just plug in a number close to negative one and just kind of guess what the limit is. No, you can. I mean, think about, the think about what the limit is. A limit is saying, what happens when I get close to negative one? As in, what happens when I approach negative one and I get really, really close to it? That's kind of what a limit is. So if I can find numbers that are really close to negative one and kind of investigate the behavior going on around that point, then I have a pretty good idea as to what's going on. So yes, I am allowed to just plug in points that are really, really close to negative one in this case. Okay, so using that kind of logic, let's just plug in a number like zero, I don't know, it's just approaching from the left. Uh, you can teach it over right as well, it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna make it from the right, just because I can. Again, you'll see it won't matter. It will matter for the one, but it won't matter for negative one. But anyways, in this one, I'm just gonna plug a number that's close to negative one. So I'm gonna plug in minus 0 0.999, just because I can. So this is approximately, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. So minus 0 0.999, cubed minus 4 times 0 0.999 so I'm just gonna fix that up a little bit well sorry about that okay 0 0.999 and then we're gonna divide it by minus 0 0.999 plus 1 all squared times minus 0 0.999 minus one. Okay, now we should probably figure out what kind of 
behaviors going on. Now, of course, you could just chuck this into a calculator, but let's try to do it without one, just to see what kind of behavior is going on around here. So, what actually happens here? Well, negative 0.999 cubed is going to be a really small number, because this number is less than 1. If I, if I square or cube a decimal, that's still going to be pretty small. So it's going to be, and it's being cubed, not square. So the result of this number is still going to be negative. So it's going to be e to the power of, so I'm going to have a, a division sign there, of a negative number, which I'm just going to enclose in brackets, minus, oh, that's a, that should be a minus sign there. So the two minus signs combine there, and that we get a positive there. So that's going to be a positive. And it's going to be four times a positive number, because I just pulled the negatives out. Okay, now here we have negative 0 0.999 plus 1. So that's going to be about a, that's going to be a positive number. A positive number squared is a positive. Uh, so let's just fix that up. And then multiply it by, well, it's going to be a negative number minus a negative number. So that's going to be a negative. Okay, now we have 0 point, negative 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 power 0 0.999 cube minus four times that same number. So this resultant is always going to be bigger than this number. So as a result, the overall kind of numerator is going to be a positive number. And any negative multiplied by a positive number is, of course, always going to be a negative. So keep in mind that these are really small numbers that are close to zero. Or I shouldn't say zero, but rather close to, but rather that this difference, sorry, not this one, rather that this difference is close to zero. So you're going to end up getting a small denominator. So as a result, it's going to be e to the power of a positive number divided by a small negative number. So I'm going to literally go write down negative small. Now, of course, in a formal test or something, um, you would just show this as kind of like side or scrap work. You wouldn't actually do it as an exam because that'd be, a, that'd be, this is not actual math. You're just kind of doing rough work on the side to get the actual answer. So we have a positive number divided by a really small negative number. Well, that's going to give us a really, really sm uh, small number. So it's going to be e to the power of, well, essentially minus infinity. And using our exponent laws, we can always write this as 1 over e to the power of infinity. And that right there is, well, that's 0. So as we've just seen, negative 1 is actually not an asymptote. Uh, if it was, the limit would have to equal infinity, but it's not. So because it's equal to zero, well, that's a problem. Now, if you were to go now, technically we also have to do the negative one from the right as well, from the left side as well. But I'm going to skip that work. You'll see that that limit is also going to equal zero. So I'll leave that exercise to you. Now I know I know you all kind of might not like when I say oh I left exercise as a reader. But the reason I want you to read it on your own is because I want you to get some practice doing limits on your own. Because finding these kinds of asymptotes are not simple. And the more you practice them, the better you'll get at them. Okay. Now I'm gonna do the limit as x approaches one from the right. So in this situation the reason I'm checking one is because at one this denominator is undefined as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So the limit as x approaches 1 of, well, the exact same thing. So e to the power of x cubed minus 4x divided by, uh, let's see, x plus 1 uh, squared times x minus 1. All right, so now if you go ahead and plug in a 1, well, again, we can't just directly plug in a 1 because we we'll get an undefined value door. So we're just gonna plug a number that's really close to one. And I'm approaching it from the right. So that means I'm gonna plug a number that's really close to one from the right. So for example, I'm gonna pick something like 1.001. .001. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So this is equal to e to the power of 1.001 .001 cubed minus four times 1.001. .001. And then we divide it by, oh, that should be enclosed, okay. So that's going to be 1.001 .001 plus 1 squared times 1.001 .001 minus 1. Okay. So if you go ahead and simplify this, well, let's see. Uh, let's see. So that's going to be 1, what is what is essentially 1 cubed minus 4 times 1.001. .001. Okay, so that number is going to be clearly a negative number because this is much bigger than this number. 
Okay, so the new word is negative. The denominator, well, here we, we have a positive number plus a positive number squared, so that's going to be positive. And then we have a positive number, which is bigger than 1, minus 1, so that's going to be a positive as well. So that's going to be e to the power of minus, well, infinity, once again, because this number is going to be very small. And that's going to be 0, because of the same reasoning as above. Now, you might be tempted to say that 1 is an ascent rider, but hold on there. we got to remember, we got to check both sides. I didn't do it for the other question, but as I mentioned, you can leave, I'm going to leave that as an exercise. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this limit. So the limit, as x approaches 1 from the left, so I did it from right here, so this time I'm going to do it from the left. So this one is going to be e to the power of x cubed minus 4x divided by x plus 1 squared times x minus 1. Okay, so once again, I'm going to plug in a number that's very close to 1, but this time, the number that I'm going to pick is going to be from the left side. So, for example, I'm going to pick 0 0.999 or something. So this is going to be e to the power of 0 0.999 cubed minus 4 times 0 0.999 divided by 0 0.999. Let's see, plus 1, and that's going to be square, and then 0 0.999 minus 1. Okay, so with this side in hand, let's see. So this is going to be a small positive number, but this quantity is going to be much bigger. So as a result, we're going to get the overall term in the numerator is going to be a negative. So we have a negative times a positive here. So as a result, this entire kind of numerator is going to be negative. Here we have a positive plus a positive, so that's going to be a positive. That's square, so that's going to be positive as well. But this part, well, we have a positive minus a, a number that's bigger than that, so that's going to be a negative. Then, as a result, a positive multiplied by negative is going to be a negative. So you have e to the power of a negative number divided by a negative number. Well, to, a, a negative divided by a negative is a positive number. So we get e to the power of infinity because this is a small negative number. But that's just equal to, well, infinity. And of course, if you get infinity, then we know for a fact that 1 is a near 1 is a vertical asymptote. So therefore, we have the conclusion that 1 is a vertical asymptote. However, negative 1 is not. So that's very important. So in this situation, negative 1 is not. A vertical asymptote. So we just fix that up a little bit. So this example was just kind of a way to show you that, okay, you can't just always say that because the denominator is undefined, that's a vertical asymptote. That's not true. You gotta be careful. You actually have, you must do a limit. And the reason for that is because, and the reason you have to do a limit is because you can get you can get conclusions like this. And even this is deceiving because you can end up saying, oh, but this isn't right. You can still get zero here. No, you gotta do a limit from both sides. And if you do a limit from both sides, you should be good to go. So as long as you kind of uh, do the limit from both sides, you should be fine. And that's all there is to it. See you in the next example, uh, next, next video, rather. If this video helped you, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video. See you then.